What, what's going to happen to the tourism industry if this uh, fish farming continues, do you think? Well, in our view, the tourism industry, that's the nature-based industry on the coast of British Columbia, will be vastly changed and vastly decimated. We are not seeing that directly happen now, but it's the people like the, the folks that run the bear viewing operations, the whale viewing operations, uh, are seeing the impact in terms of lesser numbers or fewer numbers of salmon, and uh, they have seen the impact on their bears and on their whales. So we feel that it's just a matter of a couple of years. So it's instrumental, it's, it's vitally important that there be a decision made about fallowing or moving these farms in the Broughton Archipelago before the out-migration period. Why do you think the provincial government has been so lax on this, or so supportive of the fish farms? Well, I think they bought into the idea that agriculture would be a good business for the province of BC, that uh, we could uh, provide employment for our coastal communities, and I don't think they understood the impact it would have on the wild fishery, which would impact tourism operators, which would impact commercial fishermen. So it's had the opposite effect that they thought it would, and the farmers that told them to just be patient, that we'll solve this problem by feeding, putting slice in the, uh, this chemical slice in the feed, and that will eliminate the lice. There's a problem with that, what it does to the ocean floor and the waste, but the fact is, it hasn't eliminated the lice. The lice are still there, there's still large numbers of salmon that were infected, and this demise of salmon coming back this year was predicted. Why, why are they still clinging to supporting the, the fish farms, especially when their own inquiry told them that they should be shut down or at least put in closed containment? Well, I think you'd have to ask the politicians responsible about that, but I, I think that they're reluctant to make moves that would shut down an industry or cause damage to an industry, but they're forgetting the damage doing to the rest of the industry and the wildlife. Would you say this could be uh, an apocalypse as far as the coast goes? It may turn out that way. Uh, our, some of our operators certainly believe that's what's going to happen, that, that uh, if the salmon don't come back and don't rejuvenate and this spreads along the coast, which we, we have every indication that it is, the, uh, the legislation that the farms and the government talked about being so good does not require uh, examination of the wild fry. It only requires that they limit the number of lice on the farm fish. It doesn't do anything about what happens, whether that really works. It doesn't do anything about how, uh, counting the number of lice on the, the baby fish. And it's only because of people like Alexander Morton, we know how bad it is in the Broughton. But we're getting stories from Clayoquot. We're getting stories from the Sunshine Coast. We're getting stories from Quatsino and Nootka that it's just as bad there. But there's no research done. And when I asked DFO about this, they say there is research, but it's not being released. So, where is the research? Uh, what really, really worries us that this is not just a Broughton Archipelago problem. Why does it seem that the general uh, population, populace in BC seems to be asleep on this issue? Well, I don't think they are asleep. I, I think that uh, they, I, I, a large number of them understand this issue. If you look at the uh, Alex has raised money for this legal challenge and it's not been cheap and she's got thousands of people who responded to the adopt a fry program that you can look up on Google and make a donation to. So these people are uh, not asleep. There's a lot of people just not aware of it. They see this image of supernatural British Columbia and don't see what what's behind this. That we're a resource-based problem province and we have many conflicts and the salmon farm issue is one of them. Now that's not to say that that's the only issue impacting wild salmon, but it's an issue that we can do something about. And so far, there's been no real effort on the part of the provincial government or the federal government to pay any attention to the, act, the committee's recommendations, and one of the key recommendations was to move to close containment. So, so far, there's been no funding of alternate close containment projects. Uh, and, but, uh, so that's, that's one of the things that should be happening. Close containment, in my view, but particularly with this entrepreneur north of Campbell River, offers an opportunity with a, close, with a floating close containment to cut the economic costs of uh, close containment down and it provides an opportunity to solve this problem. And I think that's where their efforts should be directed, is trying to 
get a couple of these closed containment projects working, analyze them and see how, what the economic situation is instead of saying it's been tried in the past, it's not economic, it doesn't work. Get behind it, stop doing all the studies about whether it works or doesn't work and coming up with conclusions that they should do more studies because the other studies weren't conclusive. Just wasting money. Get on board and do something about the problem. Terrific.